Good morning. We are starting chapter 11, our last chapter before we start preparing for finals. So, 11.1 .1 is on volumes of prisms and cylinders. So, our objective students will be able to find the surface area of a prism and students will be able to find the surface area of a cylinder. Um, and we're finding the volume for these ones, not the surface area. So, volume for both of these. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at our exploration. We're going to watch this video and then we're going to explain in words how you'd find the volume of the prism shown. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Alright. There is no sound to this video. So length times width, this is just a rectangle. Alright, then we included the height in there. Oh, let's go ahead. Alright, let's... Sorry, while recording my screen, it's a little more difficult. Alright, there we go. So we want to explain in words how we would find the prism. So based off of that video, it looks like they found the area of, or find area, of the rectangle. And then multiply by the height. All right, so with that image we were able to see, um, do my best, this bottom, essentially we found this bottom area, right, if this was just a flat surface, and then we added dimensions to it, but it, since it's the same, right, it's the same rectangle over and over and over again that we're stacking on top, that forms the height and the volume, so we find the area of the bottom, multiply by the height to figure out how much the whole thing is. So a prism is a solid with two congruent parallel bases. The segment connecting the bases is called the height, and each lateral face of a prism is a rectangle. So each face is a rectangle here. If we see, even though we have a triangle, we still have this rectangle for all the sides, right? So we have the rectangle sides and then we have the actual bases on each side. So a volume of a prism, a volume equals capital B times H. So this capital B stands for area of the base. So whatever a base you have, you just find the area of that base and multiply whatever the height is. So for a rectangular prism, we have length times width times height. Alright, I'm going to try number one and you guys are going to take a look at two and three. So remember the bases are the same top to bottom, so that means this is three feet here, this is six feet here. Alright, so we have our rectangle at the bottom or the top, so we're going to do six times three. That's the area of my base. That's the area of base. And then we multiply by the height. So that one is our height. Of course, you don't necessarily need those parentheses there. We can just say 6 times 3 times 8, just to show that we're multiplying all those numbers together. And when I multiply those numbers together, I'm going to get 144. And so my unit is feet, and whenever we're finding volume, it is cubed, so 144 feet cubed. All right, I want you guys to try two and three, so length times width times height. All right, here's number two and three, so two was 100 centimeters cubed, three was 420 inches cubed. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some triangular prisms. So we want to find the volume of the triangular prism. So we need to start with finding out which one's our base. So especially since it tells us that it's a triangular prism, I am looking for a triangle because the word that describes the prism is the base, so triangular prism. 
And if we remember, the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. So this height is going to be the height of the triangle, right? Because we are doing the area of the triangle times the height. So the other height is going to be the height of the prism. So we're going to have one half times, oops, one half times five times eight, and then multiply the height of the prism, which is three. So once again, I have the area of the base. times the height of the prism. All right, so when I plug all of that into a calculator, I am going to get 60 centimeters cubed. All right, let's go ahead and try that again with number five. So I have a triangle, right, because it's my base. Even though it is um, laying on its side, I guess you can say, right, because the triangle doesn't look like the base we think when we think of base we think of the bottom um, but we want to look at the two sides that are parallel to one another so that would be the triangles and those are considered our base even if it's not at the very top or the very bottom those are considered our base so area of the triangle we have one half times the base of the triangle which is 10 times the height of the triangle which is 8.3 then we need to multiply that by the height of the prism, which is 14. All right, let's go ahead and plug that into a calculator. We're going to get 581 centimeters cubed. All right, go ahead and try that for number six and number seven. Very similar to the last two we just did. So pause the video, try those out. All right, there is six and seven. So 1,072.5 feet cubed and 1,848 meters cubed for seven. Okay, let's take a look at example eight. A rectangular prism has a volume of 24 centimeters cubed. So we have volume. Find the length, or the length and width of the prism is five centimeters and three centimeters and we want to find the height of the prism. So the volume equals, and so we have a rectangular prism. I'll go ahead and set it up as length times width times height. So it gives us the volume, which is 24. It gives us length and width, which is five and three. And we wanna figure out what is the height. So we now have 24 equals 15 H right five times three is 15 so then we can go ahead and divide by 15 to both sides and I'm going to end up with h equals 1.6 centimeters so sometimes we're given the volume and we have to kind of work our way backwards to find a specific variable all right let's try that again with example nine so Jessica made soup and the soup had a volume of 30 inches cubed. She poured the soup into a container shaped like a rectangular prism and the length of the width of the container is two inches by three inches. The soup completely filled the container perfectly. Wow. What is the height of the container? So once again, we have an equation. V equals length times width times height. It gives us the volume. So I know it says the volume of the soup, but since it fits inside the rectangular prism, then therefore the volumes are the same in both because it fits perfectly. All right, so, and then it gives us the length and width. I want you guys to try this one. I've highlighted all the information, remembering we're finding the height. So go ahead and plug in the values and find the height of this rectangular prism. All right, there's nine. So I plugged in 32 and three, ended up dividing 30 by six to get the height to be five inches. All right, now let's take a look at some cylinders. So a cylinder is a solid figure with two congruent circular bases that are parallel. So we have parallel bases right once again we have circles for our base and so the volume of a cylinder equals v equals pi r squared h so this still follows our volume equation if we think big b and then h because remember the big b is the volume or sorry not the volume the area of the base 
and the area of a circle is pi r squared. So you can still continue to think area of the base times the height. The circle is just pi r squared. Um, we want to make sure we include that pi for the circle. All right, let's try number 10. So we want to find the volume of each solid in the requested form. So this one wants in terms of pi. So therefore, I'm going to have the volume equals pi r squared, so 7 squared, times the height. So pi 7 squared times 11. So I want to leave pi in the equation, so I'm just going to plug this stuff into the calculator, 7 squared times 11. I'm going to get 539 pi. And we have meters, so we're going to have meters cubed. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 11. So this one wants us rounded to one decimal place. So we want to make sure that we are going to one decimal place, so plugging pi into the calculator. Now, this gives us the diameter. So my diameter equals 8, but I need to know the radius. So remember, diameter to radius, you're just dividing by 2. So my radius is 4. So I'm going to have pi times 4 squared times 15. So since it wants the decimal place, we are going to plug all these values into our calculator. So once we round, we're going to have 754.0 kilometers cubed. So we have 7 point oops, sorry, not 7.753.98. So since we were rounding to one decimal place, we need to take the 8 and round up the 9. But 9 goes to 10. So since this number goes to 10, that means we now bring up this number, and this is now a 0. All right, so that's how we end up with 754.0. All right, I want you guys to try 12 and 13. Go ahead, pause the video. Try them out. All right, and there's 12 and 13. All right, let's take a look at example 14, a word problem. So a cylinder has a volume of 100 pi and a height of 4 inches. Find the radius of the cylinder. So it gives us the volume and it gives us the height, and we're trying to find the radius. So we have volume equals pi r squared times the height. So we'll go ahead and plug these volumes in. 100 pi equals pi r squared times 4. So my goal is to get r by itself, so I'm going to go ahead and divide by pi times 4. So what happens is they cancel on the right, and my pi also cancels on the left because we have one in the top and bottom. So we have 100 divided by 4, which is 25 equals r squared. Then to get rid of that square, we want to take the square root of both sides, so we get 5 equals r. So the radius of this cylinder is 5. All right, and that's the end of 10.1. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you ask any questions, uh, rewatch as needed, and we'll see you guys later.